Hey guys, here at osmvideoactivities.com. Today we're taking a video first look at the BenQ S6. This is an MID, also stands for Mobile Internet Device. Uh, it's also a UMPC, Ultra Mobile uh, po Pocket PC or PC device just in general. Now you might be confused and you would be uh, forgiven for thinking this is probably like a PDA-like device, but actually no. UMPCs are infamous for actually being a full, fully functioning and fully fledged uh, PC, Mac PC, that actually fits in the shell of something similar to the footprint of a PDA device. And as a result, it runs on Intel processors, and this model in particular goes on the more weaker Atom processor to conserve battery and also to conserve the size of this thing, and the price, of course. But anyways, you have that performance in there, and as a result, it runs on a full version of Windows XP for the S6. And of course, you can upgrade that for, to Windows Vista, Windows 7, and on and on. So again, it's a fully functioning Windows PC. Um, UM PCs were a lot more popular, I, I guess, around four years ago when Sony was still in the game and creating those UM PCs that they did, the UX series. But unfortunately, those were really expensive, and after Circuit City kind of uh, went into bankruptcy a few years back, uh, Sony also kind of stopped creating their UM PC lineup and dropped out of that game. And as a result, you know, of course, smartphones today kind of double up and do the same things, but of course, our smartphones aren't as popular as it, or as aren't as um, functional or as powerful as a fully fledged PC. Um, so if you're interested in something like that, you know, interested in the concept of taking a, a, com a computer in your, and put it in your pocket, then perhaps the BenQ S6 is a good option to consider because it's fairly modern, fairly relevant, and at the same time, it's fairly inexpensive. Now, when this thing first came out, it was first released in Italy, and then it went to the United States and all around the world and in Asia. And this was released at a price of $499. But thanks to the fact that people weren't so keen on this company, BenQ, because it wasn't, uh, you know, as, as I didn't have as much of experience in this area as something like so as a company like Sony. So it quickly dropped down and uh, went below the $100 mark. So kind of like the HTP touchpad, it quickly was flunked out. And as a result, you can pick, pick these up on eBay for a very, very inexpensive price. Taking a look at the hardware though, it's actually a quite beautiful device. It's designed quite nicely, it looks very sleek and uh, very small and pocketable. On the front here you have a 4.8 inch TFT resistive touchscreen. This isn't capacitive, but that's a good thing because since it's running Windows, all the icons in here are super small. And so if, since you have a stylus on here, you probably want that for tapping away. And especially if you want to use handwriting recognition for writing notes on Windows and uh, Windows Notepad and stuff like that, it's actually a good thing since things are so small that this is resistive touchscreen and not a capacitive touchscreen. I know it sounds crazy because in the past I've hated resistive touchscreens, but this is one exception that I will make. Now on the left hand side of the device you have access to a few navigational options. This is actually a zoom and a scroll bar. It doubles as two functions. When I'm in a web browser, uh, moving this a capacitive button up and down actually makes me uh, let turn the page up and down. So if I'm in the New York Times, it has a very long list style page. When I scroll this down, the web page is also going to scroll down. It's pretty intuitive. However, when I'm in the photo album and I'm looking at a picture, when I do this, it's actually going to zoom in. When I do this, it's actually going to zoom out of the picture. And since, since, so since this device doesn't have multi-touch, it just uses this little zoom bar to double as that function. It also backlights blue under darker conditions, so it's quite cool to look at as well. Now below the zoom bar, it has access to a home key, which actually takes us to the traditional home. And also there's also a keyboard key, which brings up the Windows XP standard keyboard. A thing to note here is that BenQ actually installed two uh, styles of um, computer operating systems on this thing. Some models of this product actually come with Windows XP preloaded, and some models actually come with a Linux thing. Uh, it's fused with Umbutsu, and uh, it's interesting because the XP version is just so much more powerful, but it drains the battery a lot quicker, while the Linux version actually lasts for around 10 hours of battery life, but the performance just isn't as good as, obviously, an Intel-powered PC. So you can actually do your own homework, and if you do that, you can connect it to another uh, home PC and actually install the stuff yourself. Um, either way, it, it actually works pretty cool as a uh, mobile internet device. Anyways, there is a microphone on the bottom here. You can see that the piano black parts of this thing are an absolute fingerprint magnet, so you have to bring a cloth with you. But the uh, non-glossy parts of this thing, which are the gray portions on top and bottom, actually look pretty nicely, and they won't attract any fingerprints. And the, the grills uh, are masterfully placed on the right-hand side of the device to make it kind of look like a carbon finish, even though it's just you know dots on here, but it's a nice finish. There's a, a switch kind of to turn this thing on, and um, wireless managers and this stuff uh, to press that key to activate. It also has a blue ring around it when the device is turned on. 
There's your Intel Atom inside little logo, and, and there's a second speaker on here, so it's stereo speakers. On the top, you'll see this is actually uh, it's actually uh, something uh, you'll see something called Alice Mobile, and we're not really sure why this company's name is on here. Uh, I have a hypothesis, and that's probably this is uh, one of the distributors of this device, and probably one of the carriers, perhaps in some countries, which have 3G SIM cards and stuff like that. Because this device doesn't just connect over Wi-Fi; it also has a 3G GSM quad band connection on the back to connect to the internet by using a data service. Anyways, on the right-hand side surface, we have access to a full 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for listening to music and um, audio. So if I'm in the Windows Media Player or I'm watching YouTube videos using Internet Explorer, I can listen to music using that without using the dual speakers. I also have a micro SD card slot here for adding uh, additional functions and memory on here. It, ha it comes actually out of the box with two gigs of storage or flash storage, so you can in you can store any amount of um, videos and music content out of that built-in uh, storage there, but it only has 512 megabytes of ROM, so it's quite lacking in that speed department. And again, the Intel Atom processors aren't that fast. This one comes clocked at only 800 megahertz, but you can speed it up to one gigahertz. But again, this is actually the same processor you find in your netbook, so you can't be expecting super powerful performance from this thing. Um, but again, it should be more powerful than some tablets out there, uh, considering it's, pro it's an Intel uh, Cortex and architecture on here and not something by Snapdragon for mobile products. But again, the battery life is going to take a fall. Uh, it's only around two to three hours, so quite disappointing. Right now, I can't seem to actually take the micro SD card slot out. It's a very rigid plastic. It's not rubber at all, but there you go. I have it open. You can put in any cards on there that you want. You can also see a, a, a row of different icons on the side that correspond to the wireless connection to your uh, battery information and if it's charging or not. And these are all indicator LEDs that will light on and off accordingly once uh, those functions are accessed. On the bottom of the device, you have access to uh, two uh, little ports for holding this thing into place if you want to use it for as a GPS that comes with its own cradle that you can purchase separately from BenQ, quite a, quite interesting. There's also a lanyard hole for including lanyards and keychains. And on the left-hand side of the device, you have access to a USB port a mini USB for connecting to other accessories like keyboards and the such. There's also an AV port for charging. And of course on the top of the device you have access to a traditional uh, power on and off key. There's also ventilation uh, little ports to vent off heat because you have to remember since this is a fully fledged PC it's going to be a lot more noisier and it might even have fans in here whirling around or at least venting off heat that a traditional uh, tablet PC is not going to have. For example a Samsung Galaxy uh, you know, um, tablet seven inches, it's going to be a lot cooler and not sleeker than something with, again, stuff in here that's actually thinking and stuff. Um, it's going to be whirling around and stuff is what I meant. And anyways, on the back, you'll have access to a uh, another vent hole. And on the side, you have access to a, your stylus. It's a plastic stylus. It's actually not very nicely designed, in my opinion. But it has this little part where you can actually put your thumb here, so it's going to rest your thumb here. Um, but again, the construction is made entirely out of bendable plastic, which is kind of cheap, um, even though they have this nice grip design. Um, so it works quite well with a touchscreen. You should probably use a screen protector though, since you don't want to scratch the screen on this thing. And uh, on the back, you also find, again, the Alice Mobile BenQ Mobile Internet Device logo embedded on this stainless steel arterior. And um, on the back, I'm showing you the back where the battery will go in the back cover. But most importantly, this is actually the slot where the SIM card will go, will go since this is a 3G device. You can connect it to the internet that way and uh, utilize that function. You can also see the battery is quite similar to a notebook battery. And it's very, very large uh, because, again, it's a Windows XP machine. So it's a very interesting product uh, to take a look at, especially at this very inexpensive price point of under $100 uh, online. And we'll come back with part two of this video review with the software side of things. Thanks for watching part one here at OS and VTXReviews.com.